welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with Chris Jones from Red Door Designs. Really excited to be about this one because it's a local Portland entrepreneur who is actually referred to by a former guest, Adam Haven. So, Adam, thank you so much for this. But let's stop talking about Adam. Let's start talking about Chris. Chris, introduce yourself. Well, um, my name is Chris. I'm a local business owner. I run a boutique firm called Red Door Designs, and I've been doing this work now for 20 years. And I basically am a storyteller. I help entrepreneurs and small business owners get really clear on how to communicate about their business in a way that's very compelling that will truly resonate with your ideal with their ideal clients and really feels aligned with who they are as an entrepreneur. So the way that I do my work is very much focused on simplicity, telling a clear story, having a clear message, and then taking that message and putting it out into the world via your website, all your social platforms. Um, the beautiful thing about it is that when you take the time to tell a, a compelling story, you never have to reinvent the wheel. So you get to use that and repurpose that story on all your marketing materials, which I don't know about you, but the entrepreneurs that I work with have a lot on their plate. They're overwhelmed. They're feeling spread too thin. And so anywhere where you can optimize things and repurpose things and make marketing your business easier, I'm all about it. So that's what I help my people do. Man, Chris is pulling out my heartstrings because you know she talked about a lot of things right there that really are things I go through myself. Uh, like folks, for example, me and Chris were talking right before we got on the show. There's going to be reels of this conversation, right? That we'll post on on uh, social media. They're also going to use her logo. We'll use her photo, right? These are different marketing pieces. Uh, I used to also do quotes. I used to grab quotes from each of the episodes. But as Chris mentioned got a lot on the plate. You know, it's it's been difficult. So I apologize, folks that have been watching our social uh, channels and, and haven't been getting to it because uh, I certainly do have a lot on my plate. But you know, Chris, let's talk about um, your, your current venture. How did you start the business? Oh, my gosh, it's been so long ago. Um, essentially, I began as a visual storyteller. So I loved design, branding, like most people in Portland, I worked at Nike. I got to work in their design de department and really visually communicate powerful messages through colors, fonts, photography, all the branding types of things that, that we all get to work with when we own our own business. And eventually over the course of many years, the landscape kind of changed and everybody needed a website. And so I started helping my clients create websites and I loved it because there's so much design involved. This is like back in the day when Flash was the thing. I don't know if you remember oh, yeah, that. Man, that thing just killed a tele. I don't even think phones were able to use Flash because it just no. sucked so much energy. Well, and no one, it never occurred to somebody that you would go to a website from your phone because you were, you know, it, it was just such a, a different time. But what happened was 
I loved doing the work and I really loved working with, I, I loved transitioning from working with like the bigger corporations and kind of getting good at the craft. And then my people are really entrepreneurs. They're small business owners and they're here doing the work that they love. And they just want to focus on the work that they love and not all the other things that go along with running a business. And so I started working with clients like that. And as time went on, I went from creating these beautiful websites um, that were mostly visual um, and they began not to be as effective for my clients because at that point it went from all you need is a professionally designed website to grow as a business to, okay, now all my competition, they have websites and, you know, just a beautiful website isn't going to get you a new client, new clients anymore. It's not going to fill up your schedule um, and convert. And so I had a client actually one time, this is years ago, like in 2016, and she had been in the publishing industry. She, she was really excited about this new business that she was going to launch. She has, she was like, I've got the copy down. Like, I want you to do the website design. So we, it was the perfect fit. And so she felt really comfortable because she'd been in the publishing industry for years and years. And so we set the project kickoff date, her, her, um, her copy, her website copy was due to me on April 1st. And then I got a call that day that was just like, oh my gosh, Chris, I'm pulling my hair out. I'm like, this is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Why am I struggling so hard? Like I consider myself a good writer. This is kind of my industry. What, <laughs> what the hell is going on essentially? <laughs> and and so um, she's like, can you help me? And I'm like, um, I can like brainstorm with you, but I can't like necessarily take this off your plate because it wasn't part of my expertise. Um, and so we brainstormed some things. I said, you can hire this copywriter, or maybe talk to some clients maybe step away from it and come back to it. We, and she tried all the, th all the things and she actually tried hiring multiple copywriters. And what, what happened was the copy that she hired out, it didn't feel like her. It just, it was like somebody went and wrote it for her. And it's really hard to capture someone's voice when you're not that person. And so she was in this pickle where like she couldn't hire somebody, but she felt really stuck trying to do it herself. And so that was a rough, <laughs> it was a rough like project for me. But at that point, I basically was like, I'm never letting this happen again. Like I am going to crack the code on how to tell a compelling story online in a way that truly resonates and aligns with my clients and also is incredibly effective at helping them grow their business. And so I just went on a mission. I flew across the country. I went to storytelling workshops. I read books. I practiced. I, I even got certified as one of the very first story brand guides, which is, um, yeah, which it, I was certified before the book even came out. It's um, For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, there's a book called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller, who also was a Portland guy I went to read. Um, I'm going to have to get see that every time I bring por Portland people, they're like, by the way, here's another guest. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And so um, I... I just fell in love with story because it was so in alignment with what I was already doing. And it was basically deepening my ability to tell stories um, in a way that was just incredibly effective and helpful for my clients. So I started applying the framework and, um, and also really 
pairing it with beautiful design, right? Like the story is so powerful, but when it's paired with beautiful visual design that really brings that story to life, I would say that's when you start bubbling up to the top of the internet or the top of your industry because no one's really doing both. Yeah, very, very So, clear. yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how how things have evolved for, for my business over the years. And now what I do, like the only way to work with me to kind of come in through those red doors is through going through my uh, storytelling, let's get your business story really dialed in and really clear. And then we can do the other marketing components for you. But we always start there because it's truly the foundation of your business. You know, there's two things, folks, that I really want to pull out for, for the listeners. One is the, the thing you mentioned was regarding conversion, right? You, you're at the end of the day, you know, we're talking about this. In fact, we're, again, a shameless plug. We're, I'm writing about this in the newsletter right now in the Shades of E uh, newsletter, talking about the sales funnel and how it actually, the marketing funnel also coexists with the sales funnel. So there are marketing tactics that go along with the sales tactics at each stage of these funnel. And again, the marketing team, as Chris is kind of talking about, their goal is to help you get to that conversion as well. Right, because we're all on the same team, and we want to create a conversion cell. And then after that, then then comes the loyalty. Right? How do we how do we maintain that? Uh, and that, that's that's a really really important piece. But also there was just the, the important piece of, about the storytelling as well. I really want to call that out too. When you know, if you're a don't go if you're a new entrepreneur, don't focus on pricing. Focus on building a brand, and how you can do that is by storytelling. You know, I always talk about personal stories when I do uh, uh, public speeches because it resonates with the with the audience and it also makes it practical sense, right? Here's the data, here's the information I'm gonna talk about. Now let me make it practical by actually really, really resonating you with a personal story. You know, and I think that's, Chris, I think those are two big things. You know, I, lo I love to pull out the education piece when somebody says some golden nuggets like that because it really does help uh, folks learn and, and understand like, oh, that's what they mean. Now, can you take a time, like take us back to the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey? I want to start like the very beginning. What motivated you to take the leap to start an entrepreneurship? Well, before I dive into that, um, I just want to echo your statement about the power of story as a tool for becoming memorable. So as entrepreneurs, a big part of the challenge is like, how do I stand out? How do I be remembered? And if you think about like the last presentation you went to or the last Zoom call you went to, if somebody asked you, what was it about? You would remember that personal story that they shared. They might have all kinds of other data and information they talked about for 45 minutes. You remember the two minute story that they shared with you. So Stories are actually 22 times more memorable than just facts. And that's the power of story. It's a lot about just simple psychology. And, and so when I talk about story for my clients and the people that I work with, I'm, I'm also talking about story, um, not so much in the way that like you read a, a book to your kids, like once upon a time, it's more like, how to create a narrative, how to craft a story for your business that invites your potential clients into a story with you where they're really the hero of the story and you play the Yoda or the guide of that story. And so it's um, it's an invitation to invite, it's an invitation to deeply connect and resonate with your ideal clients. That's the power of story. Man, and a great example of this, folks, is, is Nike. You know, you mentioned you work at Nike. Nike doesn't actually make anything, right? They're a brand. They put the swoosh on things. That's what they do. But then they make you feel a certain way with their branding and their marketing. You make it feel like an athlete. When I put on the Jordans, I can stick out my tongue. I think I'm going to dunk. I can't. I can't dunk it. I stick out my tongue, but I cannot dunk it. I'll be honest, right? But it just, again, going back to that storytelling piece, it's, it's how valuable it is. And so I'm glad that you pulled that piece out. Now, again, I would love to kind of go back. What motivated you to jump into entrepreneurship? 
You know, when I think back on it, I, I've always been wired for entrepreneurship. I had my first business when I turned eight. And it <laughs> what, was called, what were we doing at eight? What was Chris was, Jones doing at eight? <laughs> it was called Kristen's Crafts with a K. And it was, I had, uh, I had my own business cards and yeah, it was very official. I went door to door and peddled acrylic goods that I would customize with paint pens. And, and so truly I was, I was just, it's kind of in my wiring. And I think for me, I had to be, you know, I had to be employed for a number of years to really learn the craft and get experience under my belt. So I have no regrets on that, but I always was so driven toward freedom um, and entrepreneurship that making that leap wasn't, wasn't all that hard for me. It was kind of like, oh, the, the next obvious step. I also think that um, I was working out at Nike and I was in a cubicle and I was just kind of like, commuting out 26 every morning. And I just could feel in my bones when I made that commute. And when I was stuck in a cubicle all day, that it was like killing a little bit of my soul every day. I could just, <laughs> it was just, just a knowing that I had. And it really being in a scenario like that, um, it was not an option for me. And I also was at a time in my life that I didn't have, you know, a big car payment or people to take care of kids. And, and so I think that also really helped that transition not feel so scary. You know, I feel like, you know, speaking of transitions and scary transitions, I think entrepreneurship in itself is a very scary endeavor, right? Uh, it comes with its fair share of challenges, I would say. Could you share some of your significant hurdles that you've encountered when starting your business and how did you navigate through it? Mm, I think that along the way, um, and I am, I imagine this is pretty common, um, I wanted to kind of do everything. And so... Um, I would take on projects that really weren't necessarily like in my wheelhouse, but I, I would just say yes. Cause I, I had this mentality around, like, if you say no, they might never come back or they might not come back. Right. So I, I did two things. I took on projects that probably weren't in my wheelhouse. Like <laughs> I took on this project mm -hmm for an infomercial company. And they were like, oh, you're a designer. We need you to edit this infomercial. And I was like, okay. And they're like, okay, come down to the editing house. I had no idea how to operate even the editing software. It was like, and I remember, um, I just, I had figured things, figured things out before. And so I was just like, oh, I'm sure I'll figure it out. How hard can it be? Well, th that was the one thing, like I couldn't learn editing, video editing when I was more of a graphic designer at that time. And so I pulled an all-nighter. I didn't do a good job at all. <laughs> and I cried basically in the morning because I was exhausted and I had kind of failed. Um, so that, and then also kind of in alignment with that was just taking on more than I could handle. Like I would say, yes, I would kind of let people, um, I guess, you know, I don't want to, I wasn't like a victim or anything, but I would just let people take advantage of me. I remember I remember having like projects that would be on their like 25th round of revisions. And I didn't know how to have boundaries around that. And so I would find myself working really hard, too hard and um, not charging enough and um, canceling on things that I really wanted to do, like social things, time with friends. Um, 
so yeah, those are the, those are the things that I struggled with. And I think how I overcome that came that was just through time of learning the combination of what do I really, really love doing and what, um, what can I really deliver for my clients that can promise results? And once you kind of hone in on that, then you can start practicing like, okay, what's realistic? Like, typically I can do this with only two rounds of revisions. So how can I, you know, give my clients what they need without having me bend over backwards or feel depleted? Yeah, no, you know, I think you, again, that message in regards to, and this is some a good takeaway for the listeners, um, you know, talking about how you felt like you failed taking on that project. Uh, but again, you learned immensely, right? And then you were learned, took that learning moment and were able to succeed because now you can focus on your core competency. And that's uh, folks, you know, listen, and this is why I always say I've never failed it a day in my life. I either learn or so I succeed. Chris did both. She learned and then she succeeded. And I think this is a testament to all entrepreneurs of that's kind of the mindset. Uh, when you go into this, you're going to have some hiccups. It's not it's not for the faint of heart. It's not easy, but it's super enjoyable uh, when when you have those um, moments of success. Uh, there are moments of pounding your head against the wall several times, right? Uh, but, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, finding those moments and like, you know, hurdling that moment is very important because, again, failure to me uh, is truly saying, okay, I can't do it and then stop and just completely giving up. Okay, then you failed. But if you truly took that moment and learned from it and try to pivot and figure out what's best for you and then you succeed from there, right? Now, Chris, you have a lot of experience, so I'm going to go ahead and pick your brain because I I'm, I'm, I get to do this, right? And now, what are the most important um, components to of telling a good story? Well, every good story begins with a character or a hero that has a problem they don't know how to solve. And so we want to always begin our communications with, our hero and talk about their problems. So I think what I want your listeners to really write down if you have a pen um, or just remember this in your brain, because it's it's really important. Every story begins with a hero that has a problem. They meet a guide who gives them a really clear plan that calls them to action and ultimately results in success. And so that is the formula for story. And what I want you guys to remember is just you are not the hero of your own story. As business owners, we are the guide. We are the Mr. Miyagi. We are the Yoda. And so I I think just that shift can potentially change the way you communicate about your business. Um. So we really want it, it, to, it's, it's challenging and I get why this happens. We're entrepreneurs, we love the work that we do and we wanna talk about it a lot. But when we focus our communications around our clients and the people that we help, it, it helps them get a sense that we, we understand what they're going through and we, we can help them. Um, so it's really about them. And the other thing I want to share is that the hero is actually the weakest character in the story. They're at the, think about the movie that you last went to, like there, it begins with a hero who has a problem. The reason we don't get up and leave the theater is because we don't know if that hero is going to succeed or if they're going to fail right? They're struggling to overcome a problem. So when we make ourselves the hero of our own story, we're actually painting ourselves as the weakest character in the story. And there's only room for one hero in the story. And so it really, it's important that we show up as the guide. Man, you know, it's kind of crazy. I'm starting to think back on the last movie out in Kanto. Man, right? Encanto, Isabella, right? That the younger sister, she was the 
the one, right? Like you mentioned, kind of the the weaker link, but she would end up being the hero, right? Lord right. of the Rings. Sorry, Frodo Baggins, you are the weakest link, right? The sad. I'm right. just. It's very interesting. They kind of. I'd never really thought about that, but again, now I start looking at the stories and the movies I've, uh, you know, really kind of drawn to. That's exactly how the story kind of unfolds, right? Uh, all of them, hundred percent of all of them. Oh yeah. man! So now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of ask some questions about copy. Now, for folks that are unfamiliar, so copy is a marketing reference to written information that aims to inform, persuade, or entertain an audience. Okay. So now, again, Chris, you're you're providing some valuable information. So share us three most common mistakes entrepreneurs make with copy and how they can avoid it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Common mistakes. I mean, definitely the one about making yourself the hero of your own story. I think as um, self-employed people, we've typically been doing the work uh, for a while. Um, And so we forget what it's like to not know what we know. And what happens when we do this is we make an assumption that our the people that visit our website that they know as much as we do about our industry. And we, we tend to either um, use complicated language, use too much language, too much copy or too much copy is just like text, right? So putting too much text on your website, using terminology that kind of is over their head or that makes them work to really understand it. Um, that's another mistake that I, I see a lot. And then the other thing is really getting so excited about how we solve their problem. We forget to really articulate really where they're at, meeting them where they are at. And when we do that, take the time to meet them where they're at by articulating their struggles and really painting a picture of a brighter future for them. Um, They really begin to resonate with us. They begin to automatically think we're the best ones to solve it. They begin to trust us, which people will not work with people they don't trust. So it really does pay to take the time to tell a clear uh, and compelling story. And that's how you overcome all those challenges. When you have too much text, a story will simplify your communication. So you're not overloading people with text on your website. No one's going to read it if you have too much copy on there. Very true. Now, now, why do you think it's hard for, you know, why do you think it's hard to write copy for your own business? Now, again, folks, copy is written information that aims to inform, persuade, or entertain an audience. So why do you think for as entrepreneurs, right, why do you think it's hard to write copy for your own business? Because you're too close to it. So I have yet to meet an entrepreneur that doesn't struggle with this. When you're so close to your own business, trying to write copy for your own business is like you're inside of a bottle and you're trying to read the label that can only be read from outside the bottle. And so this is why, I mean, entrepreneurs think in their mind, if I keep working on this, eventually I'm going to be able to write something that I really like. And then two, three, four years later, they're like, okay, fine. I'll hire somebody to help me. And it's because you can't, you can't get out of the bottle that you're in. It's like putting your hand against your face and somebody asking you to describe your own hand. It just doesn't work. So that's why it's so hard. Um, it's just, it's, it's such an incredibly frustrating process. And these are the clients I talk to all day, every day, you know, they're just fed up and they need some help and support, but they don't, they also want it to feel aligned with them. So they want it to be a collaborative process, which it should be. And that's how it becomes very efficient too. You you raised actually another question because one of your statements 
Um, when when is it like you know you mentioned entrepreneurs sometimes they do it themselves and sometimes they hire a professional. When is it okay to do it yourself and when should they hire a professional? You know, when you're an entrepreneur, this is a good it was an incredible time to be an entrepreneur because um you've got a lot of tools. Like back in the day, you could not go and build your own website. You could not go, there was no square space. You had to hire a, a developer in order to do it. And then if you needed to make changes or edits, it was a total headache. And so I'm a big fan of DIYing the things that you can like. If you want to revamp your website or create a website from scratch, there are beautiful templates within Squarespace or Wix or wherever you go that are designed by designers and you can leverage their templates and have a website. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really work the same for copywriting. I think that a lot of people do DIY it, but they never quite feel good about it. They never quite feel confident about it. They never quite feel proud to send people there. They kind of cringe when someone says, what's your website address? And they're like, oh, well, you know, just email me. Don't really, I haven't updated the website in a while. It's not really a truly a, a true reflection of the work that I'm doing right now. And so um, I really... I believe there's no real way around, at least now, no real way around. Um, I just don't think it's in your best interest to DIY or write your own copy if you really, if you're really ready for it to be effective and you really have the capacity to bring on more clients. I think it's important to get to get help. I love it. You know, what, folks, I fish right now. I was going to ask. For you to, you know, what would you, what would you tell our listeners one thing they can change about their website? But you know what we're going to do, folks? This is a great opportunity for me to plug the YouTube channel. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to bring up my website. I'm going to bring up the shadesofe.com webpage. I'm going to show it to Chris. Chris, how, what, where can I, you know, just briefly looking at it, obviously, we're, you know, kind of quickly here, but hey, what, what, looking at my website, how can I improve my copy? So well, again, folks. When, when, when people land on your page, I love doing this, by the way, this is what I do on all my money making messaging calls, which I do for free. Um, part of the, the calls that I do, we look at your website and we essentially identify like, where are the holes in your boat? Where are you, where are you sinking? Where are you bailing out water when we can shore that up with storytelling and get your boat to where you want to go? So um, when people land on your page, we need to be able to communicate to them in five seconds or less what you do, how it's going to make their life better, and what you want them to do next. So um, you're communicating right here, a business education podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. So okay. I'm already just by your, but what you said, I'm already failing like three or four of the categories that you mentioned. <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to help you get this part dialed in. Um, I think you can simplify what it is. I think we, we want to communicate how it's going to make their life better. So um, we'd want to bake in, bake in a core key benefit here. And then the most um, Valuable real estate on the entire page is in this upper right hand corner here. Um, upper right hand corner. That's where the that's where the eye goes. Farther right, farther right. Oh, so, up here. Um, yeah, it would be like listen now. Um, listen to listen. You know, you could point it to like your favorite episode or listen to the latest episode. What do you want them to do? You, you're if you're the guide you're the one that knows how to solve this problem for them. So you know what to tell them to do next. You're, you don't want to let them figure it out all by themselves. They are looking for you to step in as, as their guide. And the other thing is, um, you know, you finally captured people 
they're finally on your page, you finally have an opportunity to connect with them, resonate with them, build trust, convert them into listeners. The last thing you want to do is send them over to Facebook and let the algorithm, their own algorithm um, take over and have them get distracted. So you're like, welcome to my page, let's connect. And then right at the top, you've got all your social icons which potentially could send them away. Gotcha. And, Interesting. And you want to be able to take the time to get, you know, for them to get to know you and to help them understand that, you know, where they're at. And um, we don't want to send them off to another platform. I like it. I like it. Man, folks, again, I hope you folks are actually watching on YouTube. That was just a quick two minute glimpse of what Chris and her team can do for you guys. Now, Chris, uh, what, what can clients, if, if, you know, some folks are listening and maybe they want to, they want to reach out to you and get some work, what can clients expect when working with you? So my core offer is called copy that sells in 2.5 hours flat. And that is story branded copy for your website, either your homepage or a sales page, um, but the idea is I write your copy for you. Um, I essentially, step one is I pull that story out from your brain. Our brains as entrepreneurs are full of stuff. I liken it to like a typical American garage, right? It's like <laughs> piles of piles of boxes and we walk into the garage and we- Great analogy. Cannot... <laughs> Phenomenal analogy. <laughs> Thank you. We walk into the garage and we're like, okay, that pile there, is that full of treasure or is it full of trash and clutter? And so my job, just ever after doing this work for so long, I know how to pull out the gold from your brain. I pull that story out from your brain and then I take that information and write your copy for you. And then you and I get on a collaboration call for 90 minutes and I walk you through what I've written and help you really understand the strategy and the why behind everything that I've written. I'm a big believer that every word on your website is guilty until proven innocent. So we really take a less is more approach. People are not even reading websites anymore. They're scanning them at a rapid rate from their phone. And so it has to be written in a way that people's brains can absorb the information and really um, understand what you do and how you can help them as they're going through the page really, really quickly. And so, um, so that's how I work with my clients. Then they take that copy and copy and paste it over to their website. And then at that point, I put on my designer hat and I give them feedback on design fonts, flow photography just to make sure that the visual story they're telling is bringing to life the written story that we've so carefully crafted now what's one thing that you've kind of gone through in your entrepreneurial journey that you're glad you got through that because it made you successful today what's one thing that you can kind of look back on oh my gosh or maybe having, many things having my baby boy a hundred percent and for me, up until I had him, I was overworking a lot. Um, I was inefficient with my time. I gave too much away. And having a child forced me to reprioritize and streamline my systems, streamline everything in my business, and absolutely the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I mean, you hear that a lot about parenting, but for me, it was like, of course, like parenting was hard. <laughs> it still is. But for me, it was like reimagining my business now that I have these constraints and how to really still get to do the work that I love, but also have um, more time freedom to take care of him. Um, so yes, yeah. that, that would, that would be the, the clear, obvious answer to your question. Yeah, and I've, I've, Again, folks, uh, 
it's it's kind of crazy. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a father myself. I got two kids, two girls, and I'm telling you that the way you kind of view life differently from a different lens sometimes, uh, having that responsibility of taking care of another individual is, is really, really high. And I'm not trying to be all Peter Parker with great power comes great responsibility type of things, but truly it kind of is that way, right? You know, and, and uh, you, you're due, and one thing I would encourage you though to do is when you're when you're building your business, kind of make sure you're level set with that as well. Cause I've actually had this conversation just this week where, hey, it's great, I want to grow and build and build and build because I want to create generational wealth for my family, but that building that generational wealth for my family shouldn't constantly pull me away from my family, right? Because at the right. end of the day, there's nothing more valuable than your time and your time spent with your family, you'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. Well, sometimes, right? You know, <laughs> you know, those family members, but no, but you'll never regret, you know, spending the time with your kids. Uh, I don't regret, you know, going to basketball on nine in the morning on Saturdays. I enjoy, it. I can't wait for Saturday because I get to scream at all these little kids, you know, and it's just, it, it truly is an enjoyable thing, but just remember, try to level set yourself. Um, remember what you're, who you're doing it for. And, and just kind of remember that that time that you have with them is is just as valuable as any generational wealth you can create. Now, now, Chris, for the listeners at home that are interested in maybe learning more about you, they want to contact with you, how can they get a hold of you? The best way to connect with me is to go to my website, which is at reddoordesigns.com. That's R-E-D-D-O-O-R-D-E-S-I-G-N-S.com. And there, if you're just fed up and done trying to DIY your copy, you can go through my copy that sells offer. It's a one-on-one -on -one done for you offer. And if you're more of somebody who's enjoying the DIY and just you want to learn more about story, you can also go to my website and sign up for my how to write compelling copy in five minutes flat video and worksheet, and you can really kind of learn and practice the fundamentals of what I've talked about today. Perfect. And then again, folks, if you uh, did not get that website, it's a great time to plug the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter. You can actually subscribe by visiting the shades of e.com. We'll have Chris's information on there as well as Red Door Designs information uh, linked to the website and their bio. Uh, again, this uh, newsletter will come out every Wednesday. Chris's information will come out the week before the episode airs, the week the episode airs, and the week after. This uh, interview will also be streamed on YouTube. Uh, now, now, if you want early access to this episode, you can actually get early access by visiting Patreon for five dollars a month. You can get early access to all of our all of our content, as well as the book and other valuable discounts there on the Patreon. Now, before we go, Chris, is there any last words you have for the folks listening? Mm, I think the the final words I would share are, "Be the guide." be the guide. I like it, you know, and, and again, and make sure when you're, you're, make sure you're guiding people, uh, you know, to the, to the right locations and not to walls or off cliffs for that matter, you know, right. But be a good guide. Chris, thank you again so much. I really do appreciate the time for those folks listening. Please follow us at the shades of E on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, thank you and have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.